My name is John Esselton. I'm an owner and distiller here at New Columbia Distillers, the maker of Green Hat Gin. I wanted people to make a connection. Not everybody who buys a bottle of this or sees a bottle of this is going to go to the website. And I really wanted them to be able to at least understand why it's called Green Hat. That was the reason behind having this, one of the reasons behind having this story on the side. The man in the green hat is George Cassidy. He was the chief bootlegger to Congress during Prohibition. They actually give him an office uh, for the first five years, 1920 to 1925. He works out of the Cannon House office building. And then in 1925, he got arrested and uh, had a very, very brief jail sentence and then shifted over to the Senate side. And he worked for five years out of, out of the, the Russell Senate office building. I think he felt he was a respectable businessman that uh, was doing business kind of on the side and that he didn't need to worry about it as long as he didn't go into the you know other areas. He was never a violent felon, he never carried a gun, he never had reason to, right? So he was in, in essence a, a great example of civil disobedience and also someone who was simply supplying the market <laughs> for what the market wanted, you know, including the, the congressman. I believe they arrested him out in the parking lot. And at that time, he was actually wearing this green fedora. And uh, there was a reporter nearby who simply pointed him out as that man over there in the green hat. And the nickname stuck. He pretty much got off on that initial charge, but it soured him so much because basically he felt like he had been kind of ratted out by somebody on the House side. And so he went over to the Senate, who knew him very well, and uh, they provided him with an office. Back then, nobody searched you when you came into the office. They only searched you when you left. And so it was very, very easy for him to bring a suitcase with him every day and just resupply his office. So Cassidy would leave every day with his empty suitcase. They would open it up and, hey, there's nothing in it. Congressmen, by the way, uh, they were never searched. That was part of their privilege. They could leave the office with all the booze they wanted and no one would ever check their suitcases. And Cassidy, by the way, was not the only bootlegger operating. There were other bootleggers as well. Uh, but he was, he seemed to have a good chunk of the market share. And uh, he was also the only one to come forward to, to spill the beans afterwards. When Cassidy was arrested for the second time in February 1930, he essentially reached a plea agreement with the judge, uh, whereby he agreed not to bootleg anymore. And he was good to his word on that. And in October 1930, he published five front page articles in the Washington Post. It was called the Man in the Green Hat series. And basically he outlined all the details of his operation. Then people saw how hypocritical it was for Congress to participate in the consumption of alcohol while at the same time standing on the House floor, or the Senate floor denouncing its use and making it illegal for anyone else to drink it. With this, people were just absolutely done with, with the dry cause at that point. And so when the election happened then, just a week later, Congress shifted from being this uh, ostensibly dry Republican majority to becoming an, an openly wet Democratic majority. With that, Cassidy largely disappears from the public eye. And you know, here we are three or four generations later, and we look back and think, wow, it really, it's quite a remarkable story what this guy did. I think he would uh, actually feel proud and, and uh, tickled to see you know, his, his name being talked about and that he's getting some kind of recognition for doing something that may have been pretty good. You know, if he had even the smallest little bit of getting prohibition repealed, then you know, I, I, I'm very proud of that. I think it's great that we can tell his story. We really like the name, because, I mean, we looked at a lot of things, and I don't think a distillery is after us will be able to get as good a story as we came up with, you know? I'm trying to figure out what we're gonna name our next product. Luckily, it's gonna be risky, and it won't come out for three to five years, so we've got a little time, but it's, it's gonna be hard.